phone keeps a scrapbook of photos holding several memories. Every photo that I was in followed the same pattern, at least until I turned 22. In these memories, I would be in the backyard, running around with Trevor with my shirt off. Trevor is our family pit bull. Thank you very much. My body, devoid of fat or muscles, would expose the outline of my ribs. My arms would dangle by my hips and my grin and need of braces would present no charm. All the way up till my third semester at community college, I thought I would have this exact physique until I died. Christ, do I now wish I could still have lived out that past insecurity. My usual school appetite is zero sugar Gatorade and a side of apple slices had ceased a bit. I didn't suddenly have an epiphany where I looked down at my hollow exterior and realized that I should start putting more food in my system from then on. Nothing like that at all. My mother had called me. The thing she said. Her voice. God, it was a cry that sent a shockwave through my body. But around 2 p.m., my father had a heart attack. Tragic, but it hadn't been unexpected. Like what my body would later become. He too was a heavy individual. He spent most of his last few years on Earth breathing through an oxygen mask while he sat in a wheelchair in the backyard deck. After I had watched the man... My childhood hero eat himself to death, lowered six feet under within a casket as my mom and I cried our souls out. It would have been the best time to use it as motivation to hit the gym. This hadn't occurred. Weeks after the funeral, I spent countless of checks at nearby fast food joints. The passenger seat of my car filled up with empty food bags, wrappers, and several unfinished cups of vanilla flavored coffee drinks don't even get me started on the piss bottles underneath my bed with all of this others thought of me as a lazy and heavy individual what killed me was that they were right i wouldn't stand in front of the mirror and look at my body and feel proud and i just couldn't after I clocked out from one of my shifts during the late afternoon, I had passed a local burger joint on my way home. For once, a spark of willpower had shined deep within me. I drove past the location and had congratulated myself when I pulled up to my childhood home. That hadn't lasted long. When night came, I drove back to the place and feasted down on two double-doubles with a side of chili cheese fries. It embarrasses me to admit it, but I spent the next two minutes sobbing alone in my car as I finished the second burger. Humiliation over my weight hurt like fire. Unfortunately, comfort food didn't seem to hurt until it went down my throat. A few days later, I had received an ad on my laptop about a health program. I had been scratching Trevor's belly as I spent my time browsing random YouTube videos. That was when it popped on the right side of the screen. It had been a website that involved a program that specialized in healthier lifestyles. Yet, the company presented a routine where you could eat all you want. You wouldn't have to cut out all of the good, unhealthy stuff from your diet. You didn't even have to work out. As much as I would love to say that my future downfall would be for not reading the entire agreement of the website, that had not been the reason. Aside from the no diet or exercise for weight loss, I hadn't noticed any red flags regarding the program. I typed out my information on the contact form below and didn't hear anything for two days. That's when I got the call. A woman with a friendly voice had spoken on the other end. She set up a time and a date for when I could stop by the location, May 7th. When I arrived at the building, I noticed that the parking lot had been entirely filled up. I ended up parking at a local hiking trail on the other side of the street. When I made my way towards the location, a three-story brick building surrounded by spruce trees, I took note of the vehicles. 
while some of them appeared okay when it came to cleanliness. Others had not. They were covered in thick coats of dust, along with the several dried and white droppings of bird shit. When I entered the building, I filled out a form at the front desk, and a mail worker in scrubs wrote me a room number, 213. I found a room after going up to the second floor. I'm surprised I hadn't taken note of how isolated the place felt. There was a loud flushing sound from beyond the walls. It was the kind of noise you'd hear behind the door of a public restroom when you walked by. I found the room and waited outside. The pictures on the walls made me turn away and gag as soon as I realized what they were. There were several photographs of hands holding the removed and gold-like fat from patients. For some, it may have been motivating. For me, I was ready to lose my lunch. It hadn't been long until a thin woman with dyed blue hair entered the room and smiled. We talked for a bit about my weight what was in my usual diet and if I had always been this particular weight. She then took a file off a nearby table and pulled out a tray of photos. The first image showed a brown and box-like metallic belt. There were a pair of large and white tubes sticking out from both sides, and in the middle was what looked like a clear and round glass casing. The second photo had been of an obese man standing behind a brown backdrop presumably around 300 pounds. If I didn't stop eating what I ate, I might have ended up looking like him. The third and final photo had been the same man. This time, he had slimmed down and was even putting on muscle. The female worker smiled and told me that the man hadn't worked out or changed his diet at all. What shocked me even more was when she told me that his eating habits had become worse, and yet he still had what I considered the ideal male physique. The woman told me the machine was a device that helped suppress the weight of the patients in the facility. I didn't have to hear anything else. It was unintelligent of me to not ask any other questions. In that fantasy, my old body, maybe even one that was better than before, it sounded wonderful. The worker opened the door, and we went down the hall and into a room through a pair of yellow and metallic doors. There was a chair and a metal table off to the right. There the device sat. I also took notice of a brown door connected to the room. It didn't matter then. All I wanted was a damn way to go away. The woman asked for me to remove my shirt and she sat me down in the chair and began to set up the device. She hooked up the belt from the machine around my waist. I closed my eyes and began to cry a little. This had to work. Earlier, I had thought about stopping my vehicle and go back home and forget the entire program. For all I knew, they could have just been a group of scammers that wanted to harvest my organs. No, I needed this. This fantasy had to become true. If I opened my eyes a little quicker, I would have noticed the woman pointing a syringe towards my neck. I had woken up in a dazed state. The lights had been on in the large room and in my surroundings weren't the first thing I noticed. The aroma stung my nostrils. It was like I had been thrown into a non-working trash compactor. No crushing at all, only the smell of waste. I retched so hard that I felt a migraine coming along. That's when I saw the other patients. From all around, there were several men and women, all of different ages. They were strapped down in metallic chairs. They too had been wearing the same contraption I had around my waist. Their weight had grown far beyond from what a living person could take. Incisions had been made just above their hips, and those tubes from the machines had been forced within the cuts. A fluid of yellow, red, and brown was being sucked out of their bodies and disposed from within the belt-like machine, then down holes embedded in the ground in front of their seats. 
There had also been metal buckets placed below their exposed buttocks. That's when I realized the smell had not been garbage and waste, but excrement. Some of the patients' bodies hadn't been heavy at all. Loose skin from their faces and limbs hung below the chairs, and it continued on a bit before stopping at their shoes. On the other end of the room, there was that same brown door. Nurses came in and out carrying large trays of fast food, desserts, and several packs of soda cans. The first thing I thought would happen was that the patients would knock the food out of the workers' hands and use the remaining energy they had to break out of their prison. Instead, they only looked up at the nurses without saying anything and began to grab at the food before stuffing it into their mouths and barely chewing. There had been that vacuum sound, the one that I heard beyond the walls from earlier. The machine had turned on, and the suction of the tubes began. Groans echoed throughout the room. I heard someone to the right throw their head forward and vomit. I looked down at my body. Like everyone else, incisions had been made, just above my hips where those tubes had been placed. These people... The owners of those dust-covered vehicles. They didn't seem like they wanted to leave. Had they been here for months? Stuffing their faces, having these meals, and fat pumped out of their body after it hit their stomachs? I pictured my future. The despair of my mom as she wondered where I had gone. Even if she found my car outside this building in the future, it would be too late for when she came back with a bunch of armed policemen. Would she find my body, either heavier than she had ever seen me or any other human, or twig thin with all my excess skin hanging all the way to the floor? What if I too accepted this life and decided to enjoy the rubbish these workers would continue to feed me until my heart would give out? It's sad to know that most of these things later happened, Months later, my mom had tracked down the location, and the building had been swarmed to the brim with a SWAT team and cruisers. They had found my body near death, frail with loose skin that stretched on. Although all of this happened so long ago, I still can't think about it without wanting to burst into tears. I've been a part of a rehabilitation center for a while now. After everything that I went through, my body will never become the ideal figure that I've always wanted to have. Writing all of this down helped a little, thankfully. I might show it all to my psychologist tomorrow morning. If I did indeed present it to them, I'll probably post this online as well. If anyone on Reddit or Facebook is reading this right now, I hope that you can all look past the grotesque aspect of my life story. If any of you had been struggling with weight insecurities, I hope that you'll be kinder to yourselves. Don't let it drag you down. If you do want to get into better shape, I shall cheer you on. My mom's mental health has been improving since then, and if I'm lucky enough, I can come back home and start up community college again. The next thing I'm hoping to work on is letting go of that facility. Despite all the pain I went through, I sometimes have this urge to look up that website and find another location. 